Thank you to Curology for sponsoring this series. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Rachel. <laughs> We're going to Amsterdam. The best part about long flights? Hanging out with JoJo. The first leg of our trip brought us to Amsterdam, Europe's third busiest airport. There has to be some good food around here. This place, so, this, this place so is it's a madhouse in here. No joke, like, look at, look at how big. This airport was absolutely massive, but we did track down Paprika Lay's. Do they, do they taste like paprika or do they taste like barbecue? Barbecue. <laughs> that, that's barbecue. That's, I don't care who you are, that's barbecue. We did end up tracking down some real food. I ended up having a tuna sandwich and Rachel had some kind of a zucchini pizza that, you know what, they're like a four out of 10. Now for Scotland. We made it to Scotland. Our first stop, Glasgow, but you can't start the day, whatever time of day, without coffee and biscuits. Our first stop was Cafe Nero, which is a massive chain in Europe, but I will say it was really solid, especially for being a chain. The espresso was pulled beautifully and the foams were made perfectly. I have no complaints. Starbucks, take some notes. After being caffeinated and having our little bit of a sugar high, we found our way to our Airbnb, which was in inner city Glasgow. It was absolutely beautiful. We had a beautiful view of parts of the city. I couldn't wait to get out there and explore. I do you like it? <sighs> yes. And explore we did. Of course, the first thing I found was a little bit of a noodle shop. They had things from bentos to udon to curry to rice to sushi to honestly a little bit of everything, but I was slightly disappointed with the place. The katsu chicken was pretty delicious, but a little bit of sake made everything a lot better. Rachel ended up getting some kind of a yakisoba fry, which was not yakisoba. And then I ended up getting udon with salmon with a side of curry to dump into my salmon udon because I really wanted it. So I decided to add curry to my udon and it's pretty amazing. This is one of my new favorite things. I did enjoy the udon with the curry. It had a ton of flavor behind it, but Rachel's bowl was a little uh, mediocre at best. We eventually found our way to a local pub where we grabbed some beers and of course, sticky toffee pudding. No, no, no. Here. That's so good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You didn't even want this. After fighting over the sticky toffee pudding and a few more beers, we decided to call it a night so we had energy for the next day. It's our first official day here in Glasgow. Yes, yesterday was kind of the first day we arrived, but uh, God, after 15 hours of flying, was not into it. Let's go find some food. Now we did have a list of places we wanted to visit and eat thanks to a couple of YouTubers, links down below, and one of those places was the Wilson Street Pantry. They had a beautiful little brunch and breakfast menu from anything from scrambles to Benedict's to coffees and espressos. So we're at Wilson Street Pantry. Um, I just ordered a smoked salmon Benedict and Rachel just ordered, what did you get? Florentine. Florentine Benny, so we're, these should be good. But you can't start breakfast without a beautiful cortado. I don't know what it is with the espresso and the cortados out here, but they always make them perfectly. Thank you guys, I really appreciate this. Now you guys know, I don't really enjoy hollandaise all that much, but I will say, the smoked salmon benedict and the eggs florentine were both absolutely fantastic. I mean, just look at the inside of this egg. It is absolutely cooked perfectly. It is still runny. It's still soft. It's still jammy. The salmon was delicious. The muffin was perfect. The little bit of microgreens on top gave it that really crisp freshness. I honestly couldn't stop eating this thing and I don't think it was because I was ravenous and hungry, but because it was also absolutely delicious. If you guys are ever out here, make sure you do visit the Wilson Street Pantry. After all that coffee and food, we decided to take a little jaunt through downtown Glasgow, and since it was a weekday, it was relatively empty, which was great for us, because we came across this beautiful butcher that I wanted to buy everything from. But instead, we visited Hogwarts. After breakfast at Wilson's Pantry over on Wilson Street, uh, we decided to come around and visit University of Glasgow, and this place is this place is gorgeous. Like you can see behind me, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're gonna go see if we can find some views of the city, go visit a couple of museums, and then um, I think we're gonna have Indian food later, and that's kind of the plan. 
But before we have Indian food, we discovered the beautiful University of Glasgow. Now, Glasgow University wasn't actually used for Harry Potter, but I'd like to think it was, and it makes me happy. And after exploring Hogwarts, also known as the University of Glasgow, we found our way to the Grumpy Barista, which is probably run by Filch. They pulled an amazing latte, and I had this biscuit that was filled with jam, dusted with a little bit of powdered sugar that was crisp. The shortening was really nice on the inside. It was tender. It was delicious. It wasn't overly sweet, and it went really well with my coffee. This is so good. This is really good. After sharing my biscuit with Rachel, who did agree that these biscuits are amazing, I decided to do the unthinkable and dip it into my latte, which is probably sacrilege. After all of that caffeine and sugar, we decided the best way to expend our energy is by watching this amazing organ show. And after getting our fill of music and museums, we found our way to Mother India's Cafe. Mother India's Cafe is within a very short walking distance of Kelvin Grove Art Museum and Gallery that we were just uh, evacuated out of. Evacuation aside, the menu at Mother's India looked amazing and I wanted to order everything, but we started off with the Papadum, which is a lentil-style cracker bread that also came with a little bit of a mint chutney yogurt sauce, which was fantastic. The crunch behind the lentil cracker, as well as that creaminess from the sauce, just made everything come together so well. It really did remind me of eating something like pita chips and tzatziki sauce that I grew up with and I couldn't stop eating it. Which was to my detriment because we ended up ordering a tremendous amount of food and this was only half of what we had ordered. I started off with the lamb and tamarind chutney. I mean, this looks so good. Oh my god. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you have the chicken first? Oh, the lamb. The lamb is really good. That lamb is really good. Oh my god. A friend of ours who's vegan recommended this to us and uh good job so thanks for this one emily we actually really appreciate this because this was some of the best indian food i have ever had ever oh my god uh -huh. <laughs> we continued to stuff our faces with more food that seemingly kept on coming and i seemed to always want something sweet after having something spicy and a lassi just wasn't going to cut it so we just left the indian place and uh rachel says we have to get ice cream <laughs> There's apparently a place called, what is it, Loop and Scoop? Yes. So Loop and Scoop, and uh, it was recommended to us, so we're gonna go get ice cream, even though we just ate a lot of Indian food. And it's freezing outside? It's like 40. It's the perfect ice cream weather. But before getting ice cream, you do have to wash down all that food with a nice cold beer. And so we found ourselves at Tenants. And of course, if you're at Tenants, that's what you should be ordering. Now the beer was just out of principle. I want some ice cream. So apparently they have churros and gelato. This was a mistake. I'm really full after that beer and whiskey. I'm not. But we're here. Loop and scoop, handmade churros and handmade gelato. It doesn't get better than this. Walking in, you just get assaulted with all the smells and the sweets and the sugars. Okay, so we just walked in and it just smells like churros and cinnamon. And then I got really excited. How could you not be excited? Passion fruit, apple, coconut, banana, chocolate, strawberry, waffle cones, chocolate dipped waffle cones, more gelato on the other side, and then the churro menu. There are too many options and I want every single one of them. So they have filled churros, churro cups, churro sandwiches, and churro lollipops. And churro, and churro bites. And churro bites, this is gonna be bad. I'm so excited right now. So this is the uh, the salted caramel and the banoffee gelato with a fresh churro. Do you want to? Do you want to take? Can I take a first bite? Well, apparently I don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. The churro was hot, crispy, fresh, delicious, cinnamony, sugary. The gelatos themselves were super creamy and absolutely delicious. The mouthfeel was incredible because of how fresh these are. Rachel opted to only have the churros because uh, she decided she didn't want any more dairy for the day, which is fine by me because that means I get more ice cream. I think the 
the best part about Loop and Scoop is the way you can enjoy the ice cream and the gelato. Tearing off a piece of your churro, dipping it into your ice cream, kind of going back and forth with either one, whether or not you want a hot piece of churro or the cold ice cream, everything works so well. So now that we have a sugar high, we're gonna go find a little bit more whiskey because this one... I like the whiskey. She likes the whiskey. And whiskey we did find at the pot still in downtown Glasgow. They had over 750 different bottles of whiskey here. Suffice it to say, we did not run out of options. And me not being a whiskey guy, I let the bartender pour me whatever he wanted. So we're at the pot still. This place has 750 whiskeys. I finally found one that I like. I'm not a huge whiskey fan, but this is delicious. I don't even remember what it's called, but the wife's getting me another one. Cheers. But no night of whiskey and eating and drinking is complete without finishing it off with some donor kebabs, which we came across at Donor Kebab. This has to be the ultimate drinking food. So the wife was hungry and uh, we found this donor spot. I think we're gonna go for it. I'm kind of full, but I'm, whatever, I'll eat. Rachel also got an iron brew, which we were supposed to try on this trip. What are we? We're supposed to try wine, I guess? It's like a sweet wine. Is that? I think that was on another video. I don't remember that. I'm kind of scared of this iron brew. Probably really sweet Fanta. That's all I'm getting out of this. And there it is, the fabled iron brew that we actually brought back with our donor kebab so we can eat them in the comfort of our Airbnb. Rachel got like the donor burrito, which is wrapped in a durum wheat. I got the traditional donor kebab. Now, I don't think I've ever had it this way before, but it comes in, oh God, I almost threw it all over the table. It comes in this really cute packaging. Look at this. It seemed like they were doing a pretty good thing. Everything was on a spit, which was really cool. And uh, this thing is huge. <laughs> what is this? That looks, that looks so good. I think they're extra. That looks, that looks really good. Oh my God. What is this? Before diving into the sandwich, I always for some reason decide to fill up on fries and sauce, but that's not a bad thing, is it? Not bad. That's pretty good. The bread was soft, the meat was fresh, the salad was delicious and crispy, everything worked so nicely. But for $7, mm -hmm. this is a pretty good deal. This is a lot of food. It's just called Donor Kebab. Look them up. They're really good. And before we call it a night having this donor kebab, I wanna to talk to you about today's sponsor, Curology. All throughout my time in the restaurant industry and throughout college, I never really paid attention to my skincare and now that I think about it, that was probably a bad choice. This is why I'm really excited about Curology. It's an awesome service where you simply fill out a quiz online, letting them know what you actually need, how your face is, in particular mine ends up being very greasy and I have large pores, and they will send you what you need directly to you. I've been using it for the past month and I noticed that my skin isn't nearly as greasy as it normally is. It's actually cleared up quite a bit. And honestly, it feels good not being able to like touch your face and get grease on your fingers and then you know you can use that to fry with because there's so much of it. To get started, all you need to do is use my link down below at curology.com slash chef PK, fill out the quiz and they're going to send you your first bottle for free after you pay for shipping and handling. This will allow you to try the service at no real cost to you. The dermatology providers online through those quizzes do analyze your specific needs and send you the formulas that you need. I've started to take my skincare very seriously in the past couple of years, especially now with my access to Curology and I will say it is very game changing. Head to my link down below at curology.com slash chef PK, fill out the super easy quiz, take a couple of selfies, and you're on your way to better skin health. And while you're on your way to better skin health, the waifu and I are on our way to Inverness. I can't wait to show off this absolutely gorgeous city, so I'll see you in the next video.